support, um, Risa Bowen, uh, if, you, if uh, you're still not able to be, uh, um, still not able to vote, then I'll ask for an oral vote. And so we still have a member who is desperately trying to get into Zoom, but cannot get into Zoom. No, 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 Darren Miller, that is, we are holding the vote, please, and we have made every opportunity possible for that named member to get in, including sharing my personal phone. Close the vote. Oblige die the goal. In favour, 28, no abstentions, 27 against, and therefore the regulations are approved. The next vote. There you go, folks. A vote that changed Wales forever, thanks to a member of the Conservative Party failing to register his vote. I want to give you the exact timeline of events as they unfolded on Tuesday, the 5th of October. To preface it, I want to remind you that Gareth Davis, the member who failed to vote, was not present but attending the party conference in Manchester. At seven is past six in plenary, it was suspended. The presiding officer was told that Gareth Davis could not access Zoom or the voting app to vote. The IT department were aware of this and tried to contact him directly, but could not get hold of him. At that point, the presiding officer, Ellen Jones, gave her personal mobile number to the chief whip, Darren Miller, so that the member could phone in and give his vote over the phone. At 19 minutes past six, plenary resumes for voting. And at 6.22, Darren Miller is heard interjecting and saying, there is a member trying to get through and vote. To which the presiding officer responds and says, no, 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 we are holding the vote. We have made every opportunity for the member to get in and vote. This leaves us with some serious questions and the people of Wales deserve answers. Why couldn't he log in? Why was he still in Manchester when other members returned to vote? If he was there in an official capacity, what capacity was that? Why was he on the phone to the chief whip, Darren Miller, and not the presiding officer? We know from his social media account and his email statement to his constituents, he was going to vote against the introduction to making vaccine passports mandatory in Wales. And here is that statement. I've had so many emails and messages from the Vale of Cloyd residents over the past few days to oppose vaccine passes in Wales. To confirm, I'll be opposing the Welsh Government's proposal for vaccine passports in Wales in the vote today. This will be in opposition as your local representative to Welsh Labour backed up by their little helpers in Plaid Cymru who are insistent on their actions being law, which counteract the needs of the people of the Vale of Cloyd and North Wales in creating such legislation to make an unfair and two-tiered system. After 22 years of Labour government, propped up by the separatist implied, it's high time Wales had a better voice. This leaves more questions than answers to which the people of Wales need an answer. A statement put out by Gareth Davis read, I'm deeply upset, frustrated and angry at last night's events and my inability to cast a vote against vaccine passports. Yesterday evening, IT challenges meant that I was unable to access the voting system. Throughout the voting period, I was speaking with the Chief Whip and the Welsh Conservative staff members in attempt to solve the IT issues. The Senate currently operates under a hybrid system that means only half of our representatives can vote in the chamber with others voting remotely from elsewhere. I was working and representing the group at the Conservative Party conference and I would have been able to vote remotely if I'd been able to access the remote vote, uh, voting tools. Concerns have been raised with the Senate's ICT department, and I will be making a personal statement in the Senate later this afternoon. Following the statement, I contacted Chief Whip Darren Miller and offered help with financial and legal support to mount a legal case against the government. Hi, Darren. Absolute shambles yesterday. I have a legal team prepared to spend money if there is any way to mount a legal case. The response was complete silence, a media blackout, and consequently, he unfollowed me on Twitter. I then attempted to reach out to Gareth Davis's office manager and sent her the following message. Hi, Abigail. I know that Gareth is in the spotlight with the whole voting issue last Tuesday. I'm being asked by many to get the facts on a number of key issues, and I'm offering him a chance to talk about it on rich politics without favour or prejudice. I've messaged him personally to give him the opportunity to share his side of the story. I fear if he does not respond, it will harm his reputation. Once again, there was no reply. I can, however, reveal that Gareth Davis did respond to me not to come on the show this evening, but rather to explain why he failed to vote and how he felt about it. 
Mate, I'm gutted. Was literally there ready to sign on. There we go. It is what it is now. Ladies and gentlemen, as it stands today, there are more questions than there are answers. After being given multiple opportunities to vote, why did Gareth Davis choose not to? Why was he not in Cardiff? What were the conversations between him and the chief whip, Darren Miller, really about? I don't know about you, but this reeks of a cover-up by the Welsh Conservatives. The lies, the misdirection, the absences, it all seems to be part of a much broader and bigger agenda. As Gareth Davis has revealed his contempt for those who elected him to represent them and his contempt for the people of Wales, I can only reveal my contempt for the spineless opposition the Welsh Conservatives now represent. Gareth Davis and anybody else involved, I offered you the chance to explain yourselves and you've chosen to duck for cover. But mark my words, ladies and gentlemen, I will not stop until the truth is exposed, until the lies are uncovered, until the corruption is fully revealed. And I will not stop until those who could have prevented this stripping away of our civil liberties are removed from office and these regulations are removed from the Welsh statute books forever. As I sign off tonight, I give you my pledge to fight on until we know the truth, wherever that journey leads us.